Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar for providers of the management and administration T level. Thank you so much for joining us, those that have. Um, I'm Jill Hansen, I'm one of the technical advisors, and I'm joined by my colleagues Dom and Karen, who I'll introduce you to in a minute. As you will have come to expect, we're all presenting from home, so please be forgiving of any unexpected interruptions or any background noise that happen. We'll probably um, speak for maybe 30 minutes, and then, and then after that it's over to you for questions. So um, if you ask us any questions that we can't answer today, we will take them away and come back to you afterwards. But do pop your questions in the question um, tab on your um, pane on the right hand side in the in the panel because you will all be in listen only mode during the presentation so do, do 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 use that question tab over there on the right we will share the video of the recording from today's webinar on our website later um, so now if you can um, just move me on to the next slide Karen I'll introduce you properly to um, Karen and Dom. So as you can see, we're all technical advisors. Karen and I specialise in leadership and management and Dom in business. So um, we're using all the expertise across Sitting Hills and ILM to, um, and specialist consultants and employers and your good selves to develop this new um, technical qualification to support the T-level in management and administration. So today then, firstly, we'll just look at how T-levels fit into the post-16 landscape, what they're all about. And then Dom will explore um, the core element a little bit more with you. And then Karen will look at industry placements. Then we'll kind of recap on where we're up to with the development of the technical qualification. And then we'll um, have the opportunity for questions later. So moving on to the next slide and just looking at T levels and where they sit really in the post 16. It's one of the, of, of, of the three main choices um, for post 16 learners. So firstly, you've got your traditional A level, which as you know, uh, for um, the two year subject based qualifications, which generally prepare people heading for that higher education um, degree route. And then you've got your T levels and your apprenticeships, and both of those are um, based on the same occupational standards. So an apprenticeship enables a young person to be in employment, start earning a, a wage, and still undertake that work-based training. And it's 80% in the workplace and 20% off the job training at college or in, um, with another training provider. Apprenticeships tend to take one to two years to complete. And when they've completed that, they're in a job already and they are classed as occupationally competent. T levels, on the other hand, kind of suit a more um, a different learning style. So they're more classroom based. They do have an industry placement, which I say Karen will talk to you about later, but they are 8% in the classroom and 20% in the industry. So it's kind of the other way around. They're delivered over two years. It's a full time course delivered over two years. And when a learner has finished that um, qualification, they are ready to get the job. So the employee, the apprentice is already in the job. But the difference is that the T level person would be ready to get the job. They would be um, uh, competent in the sense of they've, they've got a broad understanding of that subject area. So that's just a little bit of a background, really, um, for those of you that are joining us for the for the first time um, today. I'm going to now hand over to Dom, who's going to talk you through the core in a little bit more detail. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Jill. Yeah, the beauty of the T level is if uh, if those don't know, if those learners don't yet know what they want to specialise in, unlike the apprenticeship, it gives them a, a, a bit of a broad horizon there to move forward. So with that T-level in mind, then you can see there that this particular the diagram here, we're looking, we're focusing on the black box. So today we're looking at the core uh, and what's in that core. 
Uh, and then next time round in the next webinar in July, we'll be looking at the occupational specialisms and the various occupational specialisms that a learner can choose, uh, which would complement the core there. So in order to progress, uh, each level three technical qualification must provide reliable evidence of students' attainment of the core, the knowledge, the skills, and that occupational, those occupational specialisms there. So you're only focusing on one of those. Right, so let's move to the next slide and I'll focus on the core uh, a little bit more. So just to let you know then, the core amounts to 540 guided learning hours, and it'll be assessed by two externally marked uh, knowledge tests and one externally marked employer set project. Now, the term employer set project can be misinterpreted. So just to reiterate here, that the project will be devised by us, so devised by City and Guilds and not the employer. Uh, please don't get confused by the title employer set project. The employer does not set the project, City and Guilds will set the project. Um, and with that in mind, um, the grading structure for the core will be on an A star to E basis. So the core component of the TQ, so the technical qualification, focuses on the student's knowledge and the understanding of the concepts and the contexts, any theories there and the principles which are relevant to uh, the management and admin T level. The component then, is designed to develop the awareness of the key areas that impact the sector. Uh, it's there to develop knowledge and understanding of the seven key areas that you can see there. So the first one, business context, is around the context that organisations operate and manage in. The second one, people, is looking at the key people and stakeholders that support business operations. Quality and compliance is looking at the standards that affect said business operations. And finance obviously looks at the financial context that organisations operate within. The policies and procedures look at key policies and procedures that support those organisations. And project and change management looks at concepts of projects, how change management might be um, impacting uh, any project or how change management could have an effect on the organization and then the business behaviors covers the behaviors that influence how a business operates or how an organization might operate learners might prepare for the core components by asking themselves a set of questions really um, those questions might be areas such as how are organizations structured and managed what are the roles and responsibilities of people in an organization what's the purpose of an organizational objective who is responsible for ensuring that policies and processes are followed in an organization why is team working important for individuals and the organization and what considerations do businesses take when implementing change in their organization and if learners were to take those questions and place uh, the seven points there into context with the relation to those questions they're not going to go far wrong so if you want to take um, a, a closer look at the specification if we could just move forward thank you um, you can have a look at the draft specification, which will go through those seven key areas of the core. If uh, the links there will take you to the business uh, city and guilds website and the ILM website, either of those links will take you to the specification content itself. Now, each of the seven underpinning knowledge outcomes that I've just mentioned there are all clearly shown in the specification each has its own range that needs to be covered highlighting exactly what's in that content um, so i'd highly recommend that you do click on those links and download your own version of the draft specification 
Now I'm going to pass it over to uh, Karen, who's going to give you a brief overview on uh, industry placements. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Dom. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope hope you're well and uh, you're looking forward to some improvement in the weather. Um, so, um, yeah, we, we've we've had quite a wet time of it lately, haven't we? Um, so, going back to this sort of core slide for us, this it, the, you know we we kind of like this slide because it shows the 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 T level in its entirety. And um, what Dom's been talking about so far is that bit within the black box um, and specifically the core this time. So um, what I'm going to talk to you about is something that sits outside of the qualification, um, but sits within the requirement of the T-level, which is industry placements, which you can see is mentioned here in that um, yellow box, uh, yellow circle, sorry, below. So um, industry placements, every T level um, includes an industry placement with an employer. And, and it's really, you know, the, the technical qualification is about um, that very much around developing the knowledge. And the industry placement is about uh, developing the practical and technical skills required for the occupation. So for business and management. Um, so uh, these will last a minimum of 315 hours, so approximately 45 days, but they may um, last longer. Um, as providers, and um, you are all um, potential providers that are on the webinar today, um, it, it's down to you to ensure that the learners do have an industry placement and, um, and to support the employers uh, to make sure that they offer an appropriate industry placement. And you notice they're using industry placement there rather than work experience. Um, so this isn't like something that um, I can't remember which year um, in school they do a, a work experience, which is a, a bit like a taster of of, um, of of being in the workplace. These are very much more detailed where there is an expectation for them to take on some real work and and you know develop on the job so obviously uh, the providers need to to assist with any necessary pay, paperwork um, and carefully planning and work with the um uh, the organization that's offering the industry placement to, to help that it works but there's lots of support available for you to help um the the, uh, the organisation and, and for you to very much understand what the requirements are. So um, the, so the ESFA and um, the um, are working heavily on on um, providing the support for that. So uh, their policy was updated in March this year. So there's a link here to uh, the new policy that's in place. Um, it's very well written as well. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's in good English and and clearly set out as well. So uh, there's lots there. So what's the requirement for the industry placements? Um, it's about time spent learning and working within an organisation and making a meaningful contribution to that. It, it's not um, you know a requirement for them to just do the photocopying, um, you, you know, they really do need to get involved in, in the real work of the organisation. It needs to be occupationally specific as well, so that they're de developing those practical and technical skills in, in the subject that they're um, studying. Um, so, and obviously, you know, management and admin uh, is no different to any of the other team levels that are either in place or are in development now. Um, employers can offer an industry placement as a block, as day release, or a mix of these. And um, it can be, if you, if you look at one employer and you think, well, that's a really good fit apart from one particular area, you can work with another employer to fill some of those gaps. So it isn't just a placement with one employer, it can be a second employer if needs be. And again, there's lots of guidance here um, that, that we've provided a link for as well. 
So just some um, useful hints and tips um, to help you um, to, to make sure that you've got a really good placement for your student. Um, so, you know, you need to make sure that the employer offers a safe working environment, of course, um, that there needs to be a very clear induction, um, that they do very importantly offer relevant tasks and projects for the student to help them to actually apply the knowledge that they've gained and, and, the, and develop those skills. Um, and they need to, you know, make sure that they, the learner has got the tools to be able to do that. There needs to be a mentor or a supervisor in place to support the students so that they've got someone to go to, um, to, to actually work with them on the work that they're doing, but also to go to if they've got any concerns um, and ensure that there's a good review process in place as well. And uh, obviously, uh, if, if it, it works on both sides, then um, it's, a, it's an ongoing um, relationship that you can develop between yourselves and the employer. There's also this link on um, the T-Levels website as well that does offer lots of guidance and tools, um, webinars, recorded webinars and workshops. Um, and there is actually an opportunity to talk with someone um, to, to actually gain a better understanding or if you've got a particular challenge around an industry placement, then you can talk with someone to gain some, um, some clarity on that. So, as I say, quite a few links there that we've given to you that will really help you to grasp um, and get that real understanding of what the uh, placement entails. Um, and for you to then work with a suitable employer um, to make sure that that's a success for, for the learner overall. So um, that's all I have to say uh, today on the industry placements. I'm now going to hand you back to Jill, who's going to talk through about where we're at in the uh, development of the technical qualification. Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> Yeah, so we're almost there really in terms of um, the milestones in the technical qualification development. Um, we've shown you this before, those of you that have been on the, the webinar before. Um, milestone six, we have just had um, the meeting with providers and with employers to get feedback on, on the, the work that we've been doing and that our specialists and consultants have been doing. And that's due for submission to IFIT on the 31st of May. So the only outstanding gathering um, for, for you to possibly um, join us again for would be the final milestone um, in July. Now, we don't have an actual date for the provider review and validation meeting yet, but it will be certainly before the 19th of July, because that date that you can see on the slide there is when it will go into IFIT with all your feedback taken into consideration. So it will be sort of in the early weeks of July but we really are nearly there and um, so there's been lots of feedback on the way and we've been really really appreciative of that but do just stick with us for this um, final piece so that we can uh, really take it over the line um, and be ready to move to the next stage and so what is coming in the next stage if you could just move me on um, a couple of slides thanks Karen so we will have another webinar um, like this on the 6th of July and as um, Don talked about earlier we will take a closer look at the occupational specialisms there so by that time you know everything will be more or less there we'll be at the final milestone we'll be at the final stage so we'll look at take a closer look at the occupational specialisms and what they include um, we will continue with the final reviews of the technical qualifications as i've just said and have that one final validation meeting and then from september we will start to work on the development of the resources that will support delivery um, and support curriculum planning and we'll have workshops for the core and the occupational specialisms to talk to you about what's expected and what you're planning on doing etc and some teaching and learning support 
for the exams as well. So as we move out of the development stage of the technical qualification and into that year of you doing your curriculum planning and moving it forward and what we're going to do about all this, there'll be different types of engagement with you, different types of workshops and webinars where we'll look at those things in more detail and we'll be, as I say, developing those support resources as well. So there's um, lots of uh, support coming along there from September. Um, if you could just take me to the next slide, Karen. So as I say, we are at the final stage um, of the development, but we would still very much welcome and value your involvement in that final review and validation meeting. So <clears throat> if you've already been to our meetings, you'll automatically receive the invite when the date's set. But if not, please do make contact with one of us and then we can include you in that um, invite and you get the opportunity to you know, join the meeting, get the um, papers in advance, have a look through them and ask any questions that you, you might have and give any final feedback that you might have. So if you're interested and you've not already been involved, please do get in touch with one of us so that we can include you in that last review. On the, um, the next slide there, um, just can I just ask you to have a look at our website around the T-level pages, um, both on the City and Gills and the ILM website. They are regularly updated. There's lots of links on there to information about the T-level itself, the technical qualification, time scales, what's happening, you know, in terms of workshops and not just ours as well, you know, um, any information that we've got from, from government websites, etc. So please can I just invite you to have a good look through that. Um, as John said before, there's links to the actual specification, but also, um, you know, lots of other things that will support you, we, we feel. Okay, so that is the end of our input um, that we've planned for this morning. Um, I can't actually see that anybody's put any questions in at the moment, but if you have any questions, please could you type those in and we will do our best to answer them for you. I can't see anything coming through just yet, Jill. No, there's nothing at the moment. We'll give it a minute, but it's, I think it's important to, to note that if you have, haven't got any questions today, but something does pop up, uh, probably at two o'clock in the morning, tomorrow morning, <laughs> uh, feel free to, to get in touch, uh, to email myself, Jill or Karen, and uh, we will get back to you with the response as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, if I go back to, um, these are yeah. our contact details. Um, these will be on the slides, obviously, when they come out. Um, you know, we're, we're very much um, engaging with employers as, and, and with yourselves as, as providers to make sure that this is a T-level that is absolutely fit for purpose um, from your perspective, um, from employers' perspective, but absolutely from the learner's perspective as well. Um, so, so, yeah, any, any questions or queries that you've got? Um, feel free to contact any one of us. So still no questions. Um, let me double check. No, I can't see any. So we won't we won't drag it out for you then. Um, as as my colleagues have said, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, that's absolutely wonderful. We'd be, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if not, thank you so much for joining us once again. And we will look forward to seeing you at either the next review meeting or the next um, webinar on the 6th of July. And thank you so much once again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.